I want to thank you for joining me today for our Tuesday Bible study. Let's begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your blessings. This day, on this Tuesday, we take just a moment to bow our heads, to give thanks, and to open up your Holy Scriptures that we might be inspired by your Word. We give you thanks for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it looks like I'm already starting to fill out my Tuesday Bible study, right? This is what you have to know before we get into our lesson for today. We're looking at the book of Ephesians chapter 3. And again, this was the appointed lectionary text from the Epistle Lesson for Sunday. And we read these texts and we're dropped right in the midst of these texts. And sometimes it can be baffling. You miss everything that happened before. In fact, let me read you very first thing in verse 14. So this is what we read in our lectionary. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father. For what reason? Well, that's the beginning of our lectionary lesson. Well, you need to know what Paul is talking about. Well, Paul has a series of arguments, it's like a daisy chain. You know, this happened. For this reason, this. For this reason, that. For that reason, this. And so it's one after another after another. So we start actually in Ephesians chapter 2. He, uh, we did this last week in our Bible study. We are one in Christ. Christ helps us overcome these barriers of hostility that divide us. And for this reason, we start into chapter 3, the very first part of it, we have confidence. See, he is trying to tell us that we have confidence. We know where we're going. We know what's going to happen to us. But because we have confidence, for this reason, and now we get to today's lesson. So we're one in Christ. For this reason, we have confidence in Christ. For this reason, what does Paul say? For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father. So I bow. So for this reason, I bow. He actually is going to talk about prayer. We have confidence. Because we have confidence, I'm going to pray. Now here's what Paul's going to do. He's going to tell you that he's going to pray for you, for us, for the church, that we might have access to this confidence, that we might be unified in Christ. He wants this to be reflected in our lives. This is what this section is all about. It brings these two pieces together. If you don't know that these two pieces come prior to this, you won't know what in the world Paul is praying about. All right. So, we are one in Christ, we have confidence, Paul wants us to have access to that, and so he's going to bow his head, he's going to pray, so that this is reflected in our lives. So listen to what he says, for this reason I bow my knees before the Father, <coughs> for whom every family in heaven and earth takes its name. Okay, that's kind of a little, you know, he does these little brackets here all the time. So he's explaining who the Father is. Who is the Father? The one from whom every family in heaven and earth takes its name. You know, for something that's in the brackets there, this is kind of an important concept. Who are you? I'm the child of God. Who are you? The world wants to call you all sorts of names, diminish you in many different ways. You take your name from the Father who transcends the universe. That's who you are. And so it's kind of a very clever little parenthesis here after Father to explain who you are in relationship to this Father. So he's going to pray to this Father who claims us all as children. We take our name from this God. So here's what he's going to pray. I'm going to pray that according to the riches of his glory. Okay, another parenthesis there. According to the riches of his glory. So he's setting us up. So I'm going to pray. I'm going to be tapping into the storehouses of God's glory. But you know that's monstrous and big. You know, so whatever he's asking for is just going to be pretty tiny. So I'm going to pray according to the riches of glory, that he may grant that you be strengthened. He's going to pray for you to be strengthened. Now, let me put it this way. 
Because again, remember, he's praying, pray for you that you might be strengthened. I love the way uh, Paul is teaching us how to pray. Because so oftentimes we think about prayer as just one of these things where we ask God, like God is the Santa Claus in the skies. God, give me this, give me that, give me that, give me this, give me that. He's praying for what? Strength. He's not praying for us to get the fish, but learning how to fish ourselves so we can have the strength to do the things that we need to do. He's not asking us to give us this thing that we need, but to give us a strength that we might be able to accomplish the things that we need to accomplish. I find that really profound. So, again, he's not begging for monetary or, or materialistic gifts. He's praying for the strength that we need to be able to accomplish the things that God has placed before us. So I pray according to your riches, he may grant you be strengthened in your inner being with power with his Holy Spirit. So strengthened by the Holy Spirit. When we talk about God, I'd like to spend more time on the Holy Spirit. Obviously, we did that a couple of weeks ago, a couple of months ago, I should say, with, with the beginning of Pentecost, when we talked about who the Holy Spirit is. But the Holy Spirit is that portion of God, and when we talk about God inside of our hearts, it's God the Holy Spirit. When we talk about the muse on our shoulders that inspires to write a piece of music or create a beautiful piece of artwork, it's the Holy Spirit. When we talk about God getting us through these difficult days, it's God the Holy Spirit that we're talking about. So we are praying for the Holy Spirit to strengthen us to face these challenges. He goes on. So, so, we're, we, we, uh, so that in order being with the power of His Holy Spirit, that Christ might dwell in your hearts through faith. So how are we supposed to be strengthened? That Christ might dwell in our hearts. That we might wake up every single morning realizing that we are walking with the Almighty God. Well, you can't get much more power than that. Okay, so I, I'm telling you, how does this work? So somebody comes and wants to diminish you in some way and tell you what a bum you are and how no good you are and how worthless you are because this is what we do to each other in this world. We find so many clever ways through sarcasm to tear each other down. I mean, just look at your Facebook page. Come on. What are you saying about people? And how do you treat people? Do you really think you're so much smarter than everybody else? Do you think everybody else is really so stupid? You are a part of the problem of the world because you're diminishing people who disagree with you or are different than you for whatever reason. We need to stop that because God wants to lift us up. God also wants to lift everybody else up too because remember when he talked about all of us having the name of God, he's talking about all those people who you just dismissed this week in your stupid Facebook posts, okay? So, if God is going to strengthen us, we need to recognize that God wants to strengthen everybody else, too, because what are we supposed to be? One in Christ, remember? Paul spent chapter 2 talking about that. All right, so, let's go on. Ooh, wrong glasses. There we go. So, we are to be strengthened in our hearts, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. So we're strengthened in our hearts that this might represent who we are. I, I'm serious about this. Please evaluate. I'm, some of you folks need coal in your, your, Santa needs to give you coal in your, in your stockings because of the way you treat and diminish other people with your words and with your behavior and with your Facebook posts. Really, come on. We need to evaluate everything that we say, everything that we do based upon this foundation. How is it loving other people? It doesn't matter that you can't. <laughs> they drive you crazy. I get it. We're still supposed to love them. Love is supposed to represent the heart of the Christian. Okay? Love. Love. So if you're diminishing somebody, if you're being sarcastic about towards somebody, this is not reigning in your hearts. So Paul is praying that this reigns in our hearts so that we don't treat each other that way. Because if we treat each other that way, we won't be one. But if we treat each other with love, we will be one. Remember what we said last week? Who's the problem in the broken relationship between you and somebody else? You are. You're the common denominator between every single broken relationship that you have in your life. Now I know, 
People have done some rotten things to you. I get it. But you need to change your attitude. Paul is praying for us that our hearts be rooted and grounded in love. He goes on. Not only that, I pray that you may have the power. So he's praying for strength. He's praying for power. Praying for power to comprehend. Power to understand. Okay, he's praying that we be strengthened. That's to face the challenges that we might actually have love in cases where it's really hard to love and that we might have power to comprehend. Comprehend what? Well, we might have power to comprehend with all of the saints. So we're together in this comprehension. That's that little bracket again. He's doing a little bracket there. With all the saints, what is the breadth, the length, the height, and the depth? To know the entirety of the universe. Whoa, wait a minute. Isn't that exactly what Adam and Eve were trying to accomplish by grabbing the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil? Okay, they wanted to grab the height, the breadth, the depth. The problem is, Adam and Eve were prior to Christ and we were in our infancy and in our immaturity. I think that God intended at some point for humanity to grasp the entirety of the knowledge of the universe. But we were immature. We still are immature as evidenced by how we use the secrets of the universe. We unlock the secrets of the atom and we create an atom bomb to destroy people. We are placed on the earth to create, not to destroy. But it seems like our only thought process between, be, behind every single scientific advancement is how do we destroy? How do we create a weapon of destruction out of this? And until we understand that the purpose of knowledge is to create and to love, we are lacking in maturity. Our first reaction to knowledge and unleashing the knowledge of the universe is, wow, how can I use that to love other people? So he's saying we need the power to unlock the height, the breadth, the, and, and all of that, to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge. Again, Jesus doesn't use his power and his knowledge to destroy the universe. He uses it to do something creative, to bless the universe, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. So we are pray, prayed for by Paul that we might take this oneness, we might be strengthened in the Holy Spirit and love in a difficult, challenging world. He's a realist, Paul is. He knows it's challenging. To do that, we need to unlock the secrets of the universe and understand that the secret of the universe, what's the secret of the universe? Oh, God's love. It always comes back to that. We use, again, knowledge for power to oppress people. Christians are called to use the knowledge of the universe to unleash God's love that the world might be blessed. Now he goes on. This is kind of almost like a benediction. It's kind of, he says in verse 20, 21, Now to him be the power at work within us. He's able to accomplish abundantly is far more, more, far more than all we can ask or imagine. So Paul is basically saying that everything that I just prayed for, this is nothing. Because he can anything we can possibly imagine asking for, God can do it for us. But this is the most important thing. You see, some Christians are so stuck and fixated on materialistic blessing, but notice what Paul is asking for. The important things. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with praying for, you know, your aunt who's struggling with cancer. Or maybe for a financial blessing because you're struggling through a hard time. I get it. But there are some churches, they think that this is what it means to have a relationship with God. Like God is a Santa Claus in the sky. These are the things that Paul models for us are the important things, that we might be strengthened in the Holy Spirit so we might love, and that we might have understanding to know the love of God so that we might love deeper. You want to pray for something? This is what we pray for. <laughs> Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do give you thanks for the power of your love that has been unleashed in this world. And God, we pray for some really stupid things. Hey, you know, God, you hear them. And maybe that's a poor indictment of that. 
we do need to bring our burdens to you, and you are glad to hear them. But there needs to come a point in our life where we have some maturity, and we understand that this is what's truly important to God. That we are to pray for love. And so I'm praying for love. You call us to be one. I'm praying for you to help us to overcome our Facebook posts that are so diminishing and demeaning to other people. And I'm asking you to unify us as one people. Help us to love one another. Help us to comprehend the breadth and the height and the depth of your love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you in favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.